are at the Last Supper with Jesus, and Jesus is handing down to his disciples instructions and assignments about what will be and what, what was about to take place. And in the midst of that conversation, Peter says, if all fall away, he would not fall away from Jesus. In Jesus' response to Peter before the rooster crow three times, you will deny me. People God, here we have a situation with Peter who truly loved Jesus, really did not mean Jesus any harm in his words, with truly heartfelt and sincere. When it came to protecting Jesus, but as I continue to study these scriptures about Peter's denial, his denial was based partially on weaknesses, the weaknesses born of human fatality. And we all have weaknesses. None are righteous. We all fall short of the glory of God. And we are so guilty of this sin, weakness. After the Last Supper, Jesus takes his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane to await his arrest. He told them to stay away and pray while he went off to pray alone. When he returned to them, he found them sleeping. He warned Peter to stay away and pray because although his spirit might be willing, his flesh had become, his flesh had come to a rest. It was too late to pray for the strength to endure the ordeal to come. No doubt his failure to appropriate the only means to assure of his own weakness. Prayer occurred to him as he was weeping bitterly. After his denial, but Peter, Peter learned his lesson about being watchful and, and exhausted in 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be on the alert because your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Peter's weaknesses had caused him to be devoured momentarily. He denied his Lord because he hadn't been prepared through prayer and the understanding of his own weakness. We have to stay prayerful before God. So today, people of God, you must stop entertaining the devil. Stop allowing to de the devil to steal your joy and your peace. Know that if you stay watchful and prayerful at all times, you are not allowing the enemy to devour you in your weakest moments. When we stay on the watch and stop allowing the enemy to take us, for our, take us out of our place of peace and serenity, this is when we allow God to step in and deliver us from our enemy. This is where we receive the blessings of the Lord. Some of us are still holding grudges from years ago. We're still holding on to the hurt from people that we come to church with Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, Bible study, uh, rolling our eyes at them, vexing our spirit. Stop. Stop and pray. Ask God to deliver you from that so that you can receive your healing and your blessings. Don't you know that when you allow forgiveness to set in and you can stand flat-footed in that enemy face and say, I love you, my sister, or I love you, my brother, God will pour you out blessings you don't have room enough to receive. If you continue to hold on to these past hurts and pains, you will never walk in the vision and success that God has for you. I like to be transparent in what I say because the Lord uses my own life and when, when I bring this forth, it pertains to me too. And you cannot continue to think that God is going to bless you and help you to move forward if you can't forgive your enemy. He forgave Peter. He already knew Peter was going to deny him before he went to court. So when we sit back and we think that even in the midst of Peter denying Jesus, God still blessed Peter. Why? Because it was his, it was his weakness that caused him to deny Jesus. When service is over today, I want somebody to take somebody and say, I forgive you. I love you. And you watch what God do for you in the midst. This, it's, it's all about forgiveness. God forgave Peter, and Peter became successful in his forgiveness. So I want to use 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Love is patient. Yes, it's patient. Some people don't want to tell somebody that they love them. Why? Because they mad at them. See, I always tell people I can love you from a distance. That's because I've done prayed for you. I've asked God to cleanse my spirit and help me to move forward in what he has for me. 
So if you want what God has, some of us have so many blessings on our life, we're missing the blessing because we won't forgive the person who hurt us. If Jesus forgave, then why can't we forgive? We have to stand flat-footed in that enemy face and allow him to know that you're not going to allow me to miss my blessing because I'm still grudging on something that happened years ago. So, love is patient. does not give Telling God that you forgive. Amen.
part of our Sunday morning service. Amen. Isn't the Lord good? Lord of God. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows all of them that put their trust in him. So on one accord this morning, come on, let's give the Lord a big shout of praise. looking at the, uh, just by way of announcements, uh, we have a very important uh, <clears throat> uh, leadership meeting uh, this coming Saturday uh, at uh, 12 p.m. Uh, we desire that all ministers, all department heads, and everyone that functions in the, uh, within the confines of a department head, uh, uh, please uh, be present. We have to revamp some things pertaining to ministry in light of being outside. Uh, you know, we never planned to be outside this long, uh, but we are, so here we are, and we have to uh, make some adjustments. So please, uh, if you're a minister of the church, if you uh, are a department head, or if you come within the confines of underneath uh, a department, you work in the department, please be present. Uh, we also would need uh, people that are very much skilled in the social media aspects of, of things. Uh, if that is your expertise, uh, please be present also. <clears throat> it is very important that we do these things. Uh, immediately. Someone say amen to that? Amen. Amen. I sat in my car earlier uh, because I wanted to be able to hear how clear uh, everything is and I, I, I saw that there was a, a great difference um, having the uh, transmitter tuned in uh, to the car uh, versus just having the windows down. So uh, we thank God for that. And uh, you can stay nice and warm and, uh, and still listen to uh, the message uh, as we are uh, going forth this morning. Let's turn in our Bibles uh, over here to the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 3. Uh, you have an outline here, and we are looking at the subject matter of biblical prosperity, biblical prosperity, something that uh, has become controversial uh, because of the manipulation, because of the uh, various ways uh, people who do not understand prosperity, uh, go about uh, taking up offerings or, or just endeavoring to uh, throw schemes in the midst of the church. You know, there's schemes everywhere. Um, of course, they ought not be in the house of God, but uh, we don't want to, as they used to say, throw the baby out with the bathwater. We know God desires to prosper his people. We know that uh, it is the will of God for you to prosper and be in health. And so I want you to pray along with me this morning as we tear down the strongholds of the enemy. Amen. And release uh, the anointing to prosper. Amen. Uh, even in a greater way in this house and for those who are listening. So. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless you this morning. We bless you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have redeemed our lives from destruction, and you've crowned us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Lord, we thank you that you've satisfied our mouths with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. And we bless you because your word says, above all things, 
your desire for your people is that we would prosper and be in health even as our souls would prosper. And he said, just like a father pitieth his children, so you have compassion on those who put their trust in you. And so we thank you for utterance in the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now it says in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, Jesus spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. And then in Mark 16, 15 through 20, again he says, Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And so after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. So we see that uh, the Great Commission. Now let's turn to Galatians 3 and 8. Galatians 3 and 8. And it says, And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached the gospel unto Abram, Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Now let's turn over here to Luke, Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, beginning with verse, Luke chapter 4, beginning with verse 16. Luke chapter 4, my page is frozen, wait a minute, okay, bear with me, there you go, praise the Lord, thanks for praying, amen, Luke chapter 4, uh, beginning with verse 16, and it says, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. So we see Jesus went to church. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. <laughs> it, says, it says, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Mark that. He anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now remember, this is the Son of God having a message given to him by Father God. Amen? Remember, Jesus said he only did the things he saw the Father do. So the Father sent him into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He opened the scriptures up where Isaiah, the great messianic prophet, had prophesied of him uh, what he would do. And he opens up the book of the prophet Isaiah and he says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. 
He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And that would be the great Jubilee Day, the day wherein the free favors of God would so profusely and lavishly abound. Of course, in the Old Testament, this is the sequel of Isaiah 61. And in the Old Testament, according to the Jewish culture, every 50 years, there was called a jubilee, debt cancellation. Everything that had been foreclosed on you, everything that you lost would be restored back to you. So Jesus comes and he's telling the people, uh, I am he, I am the Messiah. Isaiah wrote of me and I'm here because I've been anointed. Now, it says in Isaiah 10 and 27, as we're looking into this subject, biblical prosperity, number one, it starts with an anointing. It starts with an anointing. And remember, in the Old Testament, the prophets spoke the word of the Lord. In the New Testament, we have Jesus is God's mouthpiece. And God has given us his written word so that we can know the living word. And the more you understand and the more you feed off the living, the, the written word, the more the living word will be real to you and you will be able to appropriate what God has for you. Thank you for asking. I'll say that again. God has given us in this dispensation the written word. Of course, there's an iPad, but it has the Bible on it. And uh, he's given us the written word. It's very important so that the, the living word, who is Jesus, can be revealed to us. Now, the more you feed off of the written, the written word, the more the living word will become real to you. You know why many people don't even, they, you ask them, are they born again? They say, well, I don't even know, you know. Have you accepted Christ? I have accepted Christ, but, you know, Jesus is not real to me. Well, that's because you're not feeding on what is written. When you feed on what is written, uh, the living word, Jesus himself, will be revealed to you. And, and, and once you feed on the written word, you will, be coming to, you will come into a relationship with the living word, and you will learn how to appropriate what God has uh, given you. Now, Isaiah 10 and 27 says, It shall come to pass in that day, that his burden shall be taken away from off his shoulders and his yoke from off his neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Now, I'm telling you right now, there's an anointing to prosper. And you need to understand that. And you don't need to let any uh, shyster, any uh, false prophet, uh, any type of manipulation that has transpired in your life, uh, 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 in any church you went to, you need to put that all aside and you need to understand Jesus said in his opening, in his opening service when he came out and testified that he was the living word. He said, number one, I came to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. And it says in Galatians 3 and 8, that the scriptures foreseen that God would justify the heathen, meaning the scriptures let us know that God had in his mind that he was going to transition uh, uh, the, 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 the gospel uh, not only uh, to the, uh, the Jewish people, but he was going to justify the nations of the world. 
by faith in Jesus Christ. And, and, and the message that Jesus preached while he was on the earth was number one. He came to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. He came, amen, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the, the, those that were bound and addicted. Uh, he came to uh, bring about the recovering of the sight of the blind. Amen. Both spiritually and physically. And he also came to set at liberty them that were bruised. The word bruised here means to, who were crushed. People who had gone throughout life and somehow in life they were just crushed. Totally obliterated. Could not function. Jesus said that there were five groups of people that he aimed at. The poor. He preached the gospel to the poor. And what did he tell them about it? He told them a sower went out to sow. And, and the seed was the word of God. And as the sower went out to sow, the seed went in the ground. And the word of God says in Mark 4, he put the seed in the ground. He went to bed and he got up. He went to bed and he got up. And it says, and then that, that seed began to bring forth fruit of itself, 30, 60, 100 fold. And it says, as soon as it was time for the harvest, he put the sickle in. Because the time was at hand. And so we understand that it is imperative that we know that biblical prosperity is a part of your sonship. Amen. You need to tell your family. You need to tell yourself that God has more for you because he wants more for you to do. Amen. He wants, he wants to bless you. So you can be a blessing. Amen. And God had a plan. That through his people. All the nations of the world. Would be blessed. 1 John 2 and 27. But the anointing. Which ye have received of him. Abides in you. And ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you. Of all things and his truth. And is no lie, even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. Amen. That doesn't mean you don't need to go to Bible study. And it doesn't mean that you don't need to uh, take any type of classes or anything like that. But what John is saying, there's a witness of Jesus on the inside of you. Christ in you, your hope of glory. The living word in the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. And the more you begin to feed on the written word, that anointing that's on the inside of you, amen, will convince you of the truths of the kingdom of God and lead you and guide you into them. Psalms 20 and verse 6. Know that. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will heal him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Amen. It says God saves his anointed people and he will hear them from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. If you're born again, you have an anointing on the inside of you. To be delivered from poverty and come into the prosperity of the kingdom of God. Psalms 89 and 20. I have found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him. Now, the word of God says God anointed David. And we understand that in the reign of David, that's when Israel really came into a uh, great financial power. Uh, it was a warfare. But as he went in and out in warfare, he came back with the spoils of war.
more. Now, <laughs> I want to say this. Uh, many times when you begin to embark on biblical prosperity, you will find yourself uh, in prayer often. You will find yourself in the word more. You will find yourself having to break generational opp oppositions uh, concerning an uh, increase in your family. Uh, most of us come from families who never broke the generational curse of poverty. God hates poverty and it came uh, with the curse. Remember, there were three major uh, things that came with the curse. One was spiritual death. That means a man could live in this, in this world and die and end up in hell. The other one was poverty, meaning you could live under the bands of poverty. Someone said broke, busted, and disgusted. But poverty is even more than that. It is a, it's, it's a curse. It's an oppression. You know, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but before I broke that spirit of poverty over my life, I found myself taking two steps forward and three steps backwards. Every time I was up for something uh, that was uh, pertinent to my personal life, seemed like something would go wrong. There was a type of sabotage that I could not see that was working in the affairs of my life. But I thank God for the word of God. And I just began to buckle down, uh, started fasting, started praying, started getting serious about this subject that is in the word of God. God not only wants you well, he wants you to have all sufficiency in all things. Now, remember, it's a relative term, but you can take it as far as you want it. Meaning, God wants you to have all sufficiency in all things. Bread to eat, seed to sow, multiplied seed sown. Second Corinthians 8 and 9, Jesus became poor that we through his poverty might be rich. He suffered the death of the cross. And at the cross, I say this continuously. That at the cross, the great exchange uh, came to pass. He took our sin and he made us righteous. Amen. And that right there would be enough to seal the deal. That you and I would be called the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But he didn't stop there. He took our sickness and he gave us his healing. He took our darkness. He gave us his light. Amen. He took our poverty, our lack, our barrenness, our not enough, our insufficiency, and he gave us his prosperity. And he told John the beloved, his most beloved disciple, he said, tell them above all things, above all things, I want them to prosper and be in hell even as their souls prosper. So we understand God has his part and we have our part. Amen. His part is to keep his word and he always does. Our part is to begin to feed on the word of God. Amen. To begin to feed on the written word so that we can know the living word. So that we can hear the voice of the good shepherd. You know, if you continue to feed on the word of God, you will hear the voice of the good shepherd. And the more you feed on the word of God, the more you will hear the voice of the good shepherd speaking to you. And he will lead you and he will guide you into all of the truth. Now it says, amen. Now it says in Genesis 39, you have to understand that uh, true prosperity works from the inside out. It starts from the inside out. So uh, it says in Genesis 39 that Joseph was a prosperous, he was a prosperous man. 
It says, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Verse 3, and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord had made all that he did to prosper in his hand. So, now remember, Joseph's a slave. The word of God says in Psalms uh, 105 that they they put chains, they put a, a fetter chain around his neck. His, his ankles were uh, 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 chained up. And the word of God explicitly lets us know that he was in pain. That from the land of, uh, from the land uh, where he was from, uh, where he got uh, sold to the Ishmaelites, and from that journey from the Ishmaelites down to Egypt, the word of God is very clear. That it was a painful experience for Joseph. He went from being a free man to a slave. He went from a coat of many colors to being bound with chains. And it says his, his, his wrists hurt, his, his uh, ankles hurt. Uh, there was a chain around his neck. But even through all that, the word of God is clear that he was a prosperous man and the Lord was with him. Prosperity comes with that anointing. Amen. And wherever you go, if you let that anointing rest on you, the promise says it will remove the burden from off your shoulders and the yoke from off your neck. Prosperity comes with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Now people fighting it because they don't have the anointing of the Holy Ghost and they let themselves get caught up into all these schemes. But you better know today that prosperity is of God. Jesus said, I'm preaching it to the poor so they won't be poor no more. And I'm going to pour this oil on the brokenhearted. Somebody tricked you. Somebody manipulated you and got you all messed up. God said, I'll pour that oil on you and I'll make your heart be broken no more. You might be spiritually blind and in a cup. He said, I'll pour that oil on you and you won't be blind no more. You'll come about seeing. Jesus. You gotta talk about it. Jesus. It is by the Spirit of God. And if you ever notice this, the biblical things that are most precious to you will be torn down and fought by Satan himself. Now, you want to hear an oxymoron? Folk love poverty, but they don't want to be broke. Now, that's something else. Oh yeah, they talk about prosperity. That ain't a, he need to preach the gospel. He need to get somebody saved. This was Jesus' opening message. Uh-huh. This was Jesus' message. He came in the synagogue and he says, I'm here to preach the gospel to the poor. I know they're manipulated. I know they're used and abused. He said, but I'm going to give them something that will cause them to be poor no more. It's Jesus' message to the nations of the world. And why do we go into all the world? We go to preach the gospel. And Galatians 3 and 8 is very clear that God, knowing that the gospel would justify the heathen nations. He preached the gospel to Abraham because he said, I'm going to anoint Abraham with a very unique blessing that when that blessing would get on him, it would remove the burden of poverty. It would remove the yoke of poverty. It would remove the burden and the yoke of a broken heart and spiritual and physical blindness and, and being crushed so that
that you can't even you can't even live in life. People that are crushed are usually locked up uh, in some type of a cell asylum or just sit at home dead before they before they really die. But Jesus said, I've anointed you. And that anointing on the inside of you. And if you really want that anointing to live in you bigger, then you'll begin to feed on the written word. And the written word will reveal to you the living word. And his name is Jesus. And in the living word, you will take up your bed and walk. Amen. You will begin to make exchanges in the kingdom of God that will bring impartations in your life and you won't be poor anymore. You know, you know, when Jesus preached the gospel to Abraham, he did two things. Number one, the word of God says uh, he blessed Abraham. And then it says they took communion. When, when, when Jesus, when Melchizedek, you, you can see this in, in Genesis 14, Melchizedek, who is king of Salem, uh, he, he's, uh, he's uh, the king of Salem, and uh, he's also called uh, king of righteousness, and he preaches the gospel to Abraham, and I believe he tells Abraham, he says, I'm making you my righteousness. Uh, uh, I, I'm causing you to be justified before me. I see no sin in you. He preaches the gospel to Abraham and he, he lets him know that Jesus is your savior and he's going to the cross and he's going to take all your sins. He's going to take all your sicknesses and diseases, everything that is of a, a burden and a yoke to you. He's going to bear on that old rugged cross and then he, he solidifies it with Abraham and, and they take the bread and they take the wine and Jesus who is a type of Melchizedek I believe Jesus incarnate came to Abraham and they took that communion and then he told Abraham in, in this communion that we have in this righteousness that we have I want you I want you to get your money out he said, and I want you uh, to begin to peel off a tenth to me. I'm going to sanctify your money so that you maximize your money and so that your days of struggling will be over. Now, I understand that uh, uh, Abram was rich. Amen. Uh, and and then, uh, the Lord changed his name from Abram to Abraham. And in Genesis 14, Genesis 14, something very special transpires. After they take the communion, after they take the communion, uh, the word of God is very clear that after they take the communion, uh, Abraham, he gives his tithe, and when he tithes, uh, the word of God says the king of Sodom, uh, remember Abraham's nephew Lot, who God told him not to take, uh, he gets kidnapped. Uh, he's in that uh, uh, Sodomite crowd. He gets kidnapped, and uh, Abram goes after him. And the word of God says that it was a great slaughter. Now, this is supernatural. 318 trained men in Abram's army. They go up against five nations. And the, and the word of God says they were in this valley uh, where, where the slime pots, meaning it was a muddy battle. And against five nations, three of you got to hear me in the Holy Ghost. Against five nations. Abraham is anointed by God and five nations. He takes on five nations. And the word of God says he didn't just win the battle. 
It says it was a slaughter. There's a difference between winning the battle and being a slaughter. It says Abram slaughtered the five nations. And the king of Sodom was so grateful. He said, look, I'm just glad to have my people and I'm glad we going home. He said, look, uh, uh, I'm going to take care uh, uh, of, of your men. He says, and uh, you take all the spoils from the five nations. You take them home. But God, hear me now. But God spoke something to Abraham in Jesus Christ. I believe when they took the communion and Abraham tithes, Abraham comes and says, I don't want to die. He said, I don't even want anything, a, a, a shoelace from off of your shoes. He says, I'm in covenant with Almighty God, and I don't want anybody to think, God, anyone but Almighty God made me rich. Are you here? Come on, give God some praise. Do you know your Abraham seed? Do you know God's plan was to save you and to anoint you and so that you would take that anointed to another family and that family would take that anointed to another family and that family would take that anointed to another family and that family would take that anointed to another family and that thing would go all the way around the world until all the families of the world will be. That's why the devil fights prosperity. It's a blessing. Now, some of you, like me, you've been in other countries. And you've seen the lame, the hawk, the blind at the airport. I never forget, I'm going, not going to, I don't want anyone to be offended. I was in this country and they had this security guard going around with a bat and he was beating down uh, those who were crippled. So, you know, certain uh, countries, <laughs> the airport is not like uh, the airports that you see here. You get off the plane outside. And then you go inside to get your luggage. And right when you get off the plane, there'll be beggars, people that are lame, people that are blind, you know, all kinds of, of, of dysfunctional people. And they're, they're, they're trying to, to get money from, from, from you when you get off the plane. And, and you can see their state. No crutches. They're just on all fours. The hands and the legs. They're just trying to get around, get around best they can. No wheelchairs. It is a sight to behold. But the word of God says that God has ordained you and I in the family of Jesus Christ to go forth and prosper. And in this prosperity, amen, in this anointing to prosper, it will remove the burden and destroy the yokes in others that you would minister to. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to remove the burden of poverty, to destroy the yoke of lack, Barrenness, scarceness, insufficiency, and not enough. And some of you know here today that financial lack and poverty is one of the worst things you could ever experience. Now you live in America, so you know, you know, we got it good. Some of you got stimulus checks, and, you know, uh, some of you got. Uh, other things and uh they they had this COVID wherein uh you couldn't be put out you know but in other countries not so you don't have it you don't get it 
and the government's not giving you a dime, and, and, and you're on your own. Don't we have a crisis at the border right now? Uh, 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 folk coming up uh, from the, uh, the southern hemisphere. Why? Because they want to get into this country that first started off on their currency. In God we trust. There was something about putting on the money. In God we trust. Amen? And I believe that God still wants he still wants his people, like never before, to be anointed, to prosper, amen, so that all the families of the nation can be blessed. I want to close with this. You know, uh, for years I grew up, you know, in a church that they didn't believe in speaking in tongues. Said, well, what's that got to do with prosperity? You know, the Bible says that when you pray in the spirit, you, you, you build yourself up. You edify yourself. And, and I don't know about you, but if you've ever really been in the, 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 the clutches of poverty, if, you, if you've ever been without a job and couldn't find one, you know, sometimes people... You know, as life gets better for them, they forget where they come from. But if you ever really been broke, and if you ever really didn't know how you were going to feed your children, and if you ever really been homeless, and if that thing ever really went to the next level on you, you know that Almighty God, the God that saved you, it would not be it would not be hard to imagine that he would have some type of a uh, plan for your increase, seeing that he is the lover of your soul. And I say that to say, for years, it's not as much now, but for years, people fought in the body of Christ, speaking in tongues. Right there in the New Testament, I know you full gospel people, some of you Pentecostal people, that's hard for you to imagine, but, but, but I came out of a church, it, what, they said it went out with the apostles, it was not so, and now I think about how many days when I was down and I was burdened, but I had the, 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 uh, the, the, the blessing of being able to pray in the Spirit. And I kept on praying in the spirit and praying in the spirit. And, and the word of God says, when you pray in the spirit, your spirit begins to be edified. And you, you get built up. And that oppression was broke off me. That depression was broke off me. And I was able to run again and go forward. Amen. And see my way. I say that to say. We all know that the gift of, of tongues is, is a reality. And we all know that prosperity is the way of God. That's a relative term. I didn't say tomorrow you're going to be a, a, a multi-millionaire. I'm not saying you can't be either. The scriptures make it very clear. How far do you want to take it? But it starts with the anointing. It starts with the written word, and the written word will unveil the living word, and you will hear Jesus speak to you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. You really want to prosper? Amen. It's in the written word. Don't listen to those who've had bad experiences, but don't want to be in the word. Some people have bad experience. They'd rather go to Delaware Park than get in the Word. <laughs> then they leave Delaware Park mad at it when they went. Well, you need to tell somebody there's a true prosperity. And Jesus said, I'm anointed. I'm anointed to preach the good news. The good news to the poor. 
and the gospel, the scriptures foreseen that, the, that God would justify the heathen. He preached the gospel to Abraham. And this is what Abraham said. Because God told him that in you, my plan is in you, Abraham, all the nations of the world would be blessed. And when Abraham was faced with the spoils of five nations, he turned it down. My old Baptist pastor would say, good God Almighty. Five nations, the wealth of five nations being laid at your feet today. And you say no. Well, do you have five nations worth of wealth? No. Abraham said, not yet, but I'm, I'm in covenant with Almighty God. And he promised to anoint me and make me very rich. So that in me, in my family, in the Abraham family, all the nations of the world would be blessed. And you know about Isaac, the story of Isaac? It says that it was a famine in the land. And in, in, instead of, 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 of Isaac uh, getting all he, he can and, and canning all he got, it says he sowed in the time of famine. And the word of God says, instead of him and, and, and his family being in a, a, a famine mode, in a lack mode, it says he multiplied a hundredfold. A hundredfold. Now I'm going to prophesy this to you by the Holy Ghost. I believe in these last days. With not only wars and rumors of wars and pandemics and all times of all kinds of catastrophic events, I believe God has called His people to prosper like never before, so that somebody could have hope in seeing your life. That somebody would be blessed as you were a blessing to them. That somebody would have the burden removed and the yoke destroyed because instead of you in this time of pandemic, instead of you staying home, instead of you just doing you, you begin to get with the written word and the written word reveal the living word to you even more and you would come out of this pandemic better than you ever were because God loves to anoint his people in perilous time. You are called to go forward. You are called to prosper because somebody is waiting on you. Somebody is longing for you to come by and help them. And you won't be able to say, I can't help you. I can barely help myself. You'll be able to say, the Lord has blessed me. Hey, I've taken the bread. I've taken the wine of the kingdom of God and I've got a covenant with Jesus, the maker and the sustainer of all things. In the beginning, I close, was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by the living word. And there's not anything that's been made that was not made by the living word. Jesus, your Savior, the King of glory, is your personal Lord and Savior. And he told as he came into the synagogue, but the, the day that he announced he was letting everybody know he was the Savior. He was the Messiah. His first scripture came out of Isaiah 61. And he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And if ye be Christ, if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed. 
and you've got a covenant of prosperity. I don't know if you know it or not. If you don't know it, I'm telling you right now, shut all that mess down that you hear people talking about. You got a covenant with Almighty God. Now, if you're going to believe God, are you going to believe the world? You believe God. You believe God. And watch what he does for you. you say it. Watch what he does for you. you Believe, I challenge you today. When you go home all by yourself, get in the scripture. Go back over Isaiah 61. And it talks about this anointing would bring beauty for ashes. And the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And men would call you ministers of God. This great gospel is to be preached in all the world. And it comes with a bird removing, yoke destroying, anointing to the poor, to the brokenhearted, to the captive, to the bruised, amen, to the blind, amen, so that they might recover from the snare of the devil. My time is up. I thank you so much for yours. You've been a wonderful congregation today. I appreciate you coming out in your cars, sitting in your cars with the heat on. Amen. But uh, uh, this is where we are right now. And uh, next week, bring somebody else. Amen. And uh, we have church, parking lot church, but it's good to us. Amen. Somebody give God some praise. Come on and bless him. 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 The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. Brother Mark. to the ministry as well uh, by going to our website which is spirit life ministries international.org under the giving page there are two platforms online that you're able to give uh, you also have the ability to send a gift uh, physically to our address which is 3401 governor prince boulevard wilmington delaware 19802 uh, regarding um, anyone that may have recently accepted the Lord or in need of salvation or in need of a church home, uh, or even just we'd like to hear about any testimonies that you may have to share um, with your prayers that are going forth, as well as blessings that you might have recently received, um, we'd like to hear it if you go to our website, which is under the uh, Spirit Life Ministries International.org, under the Contact Us page. There are three forms. You can fill out all three or one of the three regarding uh, the things I just mentioned. And regarding the um, scriptures for the outline that Pastor has been uh, sharing with uh, last Sunday, this Sunday, as well as the Bible study, uh, that's actually on the website as well under the update page. So I hope that you would have a Christ-filled day. God bless.